Hello, I am Dr. Andy James, and I'll be presenting our research on behalf of Dr. Ron Thompson, who is unable to attend this meeting. I'll describe our work developing Optima, a mobile app for reducing relapse among adults receiving medication-assisted treatment for opioid use disorders. First, I'd like to state our acknowledgments and disclosures. This study was supported with funding from the Glidden Pilot Projects with myself as primary investigator. The UAMS Patent and Copyright Committee has claimed the Optima smartphone app as intellectual property. We, the investigators, have no financial conflicts of interest to disclose with regards to the Optima smartphone app. As I'm sure you know, the United States is experiencing an opioid overdose crisis. In 2018, over 130 people die in the United States each day from opioid overdoses. Opioid overdoses accounted for two thirds of all United States drug overdose deaths. Rural states are particularly hard hit as they suffer from the perfect storm of higher opioid prescription rates and reduced access to healthcare, culminating in rural opioid related mortality rates up to four times greater than those observed in urban areas. Our state of Arkansas is no exception, with the second highest opioid prescription rate in the nation. Medication assisted treatment, or MAT, uses opioid substitution, such as methadone, buprenorphine, or suboxone, to facilitate recovery by alleviating opioid withdrawal symptoms and craving. Although MAT is one of our most efficacious treatments for opioid use disorder, an estimated 40% of patients relapse within one year of starting MAT. This led our interdisciplinary team to ask the question, can a smartphone delivered at base intervention facilitate opioid abstinence among patients receiving MAT for opioid use disorder? To test this question, we developed the tool Optima or Opioid Treatment Mobile App. Optima was patterned after on track a smartphone app developed by Dr. Thompson to reduce alcohol use and risky sexual behavior among homeless young adults. Optima offers tracking of opioid craving and withdrawal symptoms, mood, and drug use. Participants receive daily text messages reminding them to track their behaviors on the previous day. For example, participants were asked to rate their stress on an 11-point Likert scale. They also rated their anger, their depression, their opioid craving, and their opioid withdrawal symptoms. Participants indicated whether or not they had lapsed in opioid use and whether or not they had used alcohol or marijuana. After completing the daily ratings, participants received personalized feedback congratulating them on remaining abstinent or offering encouragement if they had lapsed. Optima also provided charts plotting the participants' responses over time and links to emergency resources. We offered enrollment in the Optima study to clients receiving MAT at the UAMS Center for Addiction Services and Treatment. This study consisted of an hour-long intake session in which participants provided written informed consent. We installed the app on their smartphones, and we trained the participants to use the app. Participants were asked to complete daily ratings over the, with the app over the next three months, and they consented to receive daily text reminders to complete those ratings. After three months, we invited the participants to a follow-up interview consisting of a survey in which participants could give feedback on Optimus features. We enrolled a total of 16 participants from June to December 2019. We only enrolled one participant in the first three months of our study, prompting focus groups to identify barriers to recruitment. After streamlining our intake session from three hours to less than one hour, increasing compensation to $50 per session, and revising our recruitment brochures, we were able to enroll 15 more participants from mid-September to the end of December. 10 of our participants identified as female, and 12 identified as Caucasian or white. The participants' mean age was 40 years with a standard deviation of 10 years, ranging from 21 to 60 years. Four participants were withdrawn from the study due to noncompliance. 
Two participants never use the app after intake, and two participants only use the app once after intake. We theorized that if Optima facilitated opioid abstinence, then the percent days of Optima use during the study would predict opioid outcomes. The first two charts, these two charts illustrate Optima app use in our sample. On the left, we show that percent days of Optima app use decreased over time. Participants used the app for a median of 47% of all possible days in month one, 18% of all possible days in month two, and 20% of all days in month three. App usage was significantly greater in month one than in month two or month three. The figure on the right depicts app usage by day for each participant. As you can see, there's quite a bit of individual variance in app use, with subject four only using Optima for 12% of all possible days, and subject 12 using Optima for 97% of all possible days. We next sought to evaluate factors influencing Optima use. In our sample of seven subjects acquired at time of abstract submission, we reported that stress at intake predicted percent days of optimal use. We also reported that anger at intake predicted optimal use. These findings did not hold in our larger sample, neither for percent use across all three months, nor for percent use during the first month. However, we report that 100% of participants who used our Optima app remained abstinent from opioid misuse during MAT as determined via weekly urinalysis testing. We generated a survival curve comparing weekly lapses in opioid misuse between our Optima sample and a sample of 33 MAT clients who enrolled in MAT during the same time frame, that is from September through December 2019, and who did not participate in our Optima study. Only 79% of our MAT-only clients remained abstinent from opioids during the first three months of MAT, with 15% lapsing by the second week of treatment. This study suffers from a critical caveat in that this was not a randomized controlled trial. Thus, we may have a selection bias in that clients who are more likely to remain abstinent may have been more inclined to participate in our research study. We also evaluated factors that influenced participants' daily craving ratings. Please see our e-poster Tuesday in the opioid treatment session for more details. Finally, participants were invited to a neuroimaging sub-study evaluating the neural mechanisms underlying opioid craving. Please contact Dr. Andy James, that's me, for more information. We thank the Glidden Pilot Project for funding this research. If you have any questions or comments, please contact Dr. Ron Thompson, Jr. or myself, Dr. Andy James, at the emails provided. Thank you.